Most Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Models? Models? Well, the Models folder itself, you can go ahead and add classes to the Models folder that are in charge of actually working with the data and presenting it to your views, if you will, or to your controller, I should say. Uh, but at the same time, it's you're more in control of exactly what should be in there. And again, I want to warn you that the entity framework, if you're like, well, I'm going to use Link to SQL for doing all this, keep in mind they're changing Links to SQL dramatically from .NET 3.5 to .NET 4.0. Okay. Oh, also notice there's a folder called Shared there under the Views. In that Views folder, that Shared folder has some ASCX, a master page, and an ASPX. That's where you can actually put web pages that are shared across multiple views. So, let's take a look at an example of like the home controller and then the home views. On my machine, here we have Visual Studio, right? And you can see that if I open up the controller section, I have home controller. And if I open this guy up, let me go ahead and minimize the toolbox you can see that I'm inheriting from the controller class and that its name is actually ending with the name controller. I've also got two methods, index and about, right? Index and about. Well, if I go to the views section for home, you'll notice I also have index and about. Based on those two public methods there, they go to those two specific views. Like, for example, in the about method here, which just returns an action result, it automatically comes into the about.aspx page. And here you can see that we have a content placeholder, which is just displaying, you know, what content here. And I can put in whatever content I want, and that's what's going to be viewed. Okay? Now, this is using a master page under the shared folder. You can see it's using site.master. And, of course, we just have a very simple little content placeholder saying about us. Likewise for the index, you can see for the index method right here, we have a view data being stored called message, and it says, welcome to ASP.NET MVC. This string here is being stuck into this dictionary object called view data, and then over here in the actual index.aspx, we're pulling that information out. We're pulling it out here by saying view data message and this should look familiar to you folks who've done some classic ASP. We have the use of that less than percent and that equal sign. And then we're actually doing a little HTML encoding that whatever that message is in the standard HTML. Again, notice how we have much more control over exactly what's displayed in the web browser. We're in control of the exact HTML and JavaScript that'll be sent to the client. This is your standard project type that's created in Visual Studio 2008. But if I also show you the MVC version here in Visual Studio 2010, thankfully you're going to see the exact same model. We have a home controller here, right, which has that index and that about method. And we also have the views. So if I go into the home folder, because that's the name of the controller, right, I can see the exact same content here in the index and within the about. So if you learn it with Visual Studio 2008, you come over to your Studio 2010, same basic thing. They're not rewriting everything completely with the version 2 of the MVC. And it's the same basic project template with the starting code that you get with Studio 2008. Okay. Now, like I said, with .NET 3.5 Service Pack 1, which is also the update for Visual Studio 2008, you do get the system.web.routing.dll, which allows you to add custom routing to your query strings. In other words, you can have more, or if, um, if I, I should say it this way, you can brutify your query string by actually passing along special information between your forward slashes. Instead of having a giant ASPX file with a bunch of extra query string parameters tacked onto the end, you can go ahead and take on those parameters just as forward slashes. 
you know, forward slash this variable, forward slash this variable, which is going to make it much easier to find your web pages, especially with the latest search engine optimization uh, tools out there. Of course, this is used by the dynamic data web applications right now, and you can take advantage of web routing right away without even bothering with MVC if that's something you're interested in. You can just go ahead and work with uh, the routing in your global.asax file. There is a static method called register routes, and in the startup event handler, you'll call register routes to register all the different routes based on what's up in the query string. Here you can see the global.asax.cs, because we're looking at the C-sharp version of this file. And you notice near the bottom, it has that application start event handler. And it calls register routes. In that register routes method, we pass along route table.routes. And it gets passed up as a route collection. The first thing that is done is it ignores any call to a .axd handler. Okay, That's the first thing it does in the very beginning there within that register routes method. But after that, it registers a default map, a default route, if you will. For example, you notice the word default inside of quotes there. That is the actual route name, and you can refer to a particular route just based on that friendly name. Right below it are the URL with parameters. For example, you can see controller, action, and ID. Each of those, of course, are contained within curly braces, and a forward slash separates each of those. Now right below that, we can also have some parameter defaults. For example, if somebody doesn't pass along on the query string the actual controller name, they don't pass along the actual public method within that controller, and if they don't pass any other parameters, these are the defaults. Now, home, for example, was the name of our controller. We were looking at that home controller. Well, that's the controller we're referring to when we say home. And in the actual query string, if we just say the name of our site forward slash home, it's going to automatically use that controller. If we don't specify the index action, well, that's going to be the default action. Otherwise, we could specify it. And then finally, any other query string parameters we want to pass along, in this case here, it would be an ID. Now you can go ahead and add as many routes as you want to your global.asax file, but keep in mind that they have to be added in a specific order. So what you should really do is add them from the most specific type of routes to the most generic, which are going to more act more like safety nets and catch-alls, if you will. Keep in mind that when a request comes into the server, the first route that actually matches the request wins, and that's where it's going to navigate the user to a particular page. As you can see here, we've got a couple of different routes being added. We've got one here, the, the product route, which is more specific than the default one. And notice in the product route, we're expecting the word product to be passed in. Notice, for example, in the word product, we don't have the actual curly braces around it. If they actually specify product right there in the query string, then it's going to be passed into this guy. And then the action, which is can be choose, chosen if they specify, um, can be indexed or they can specify whatever other type of action and they can pass along some data if they'd like. If they'd use any other query string, it's going to come down to the default map router. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.